Hi and welcome. So I thought we'd do some food sketching today. Now some time back I'd gone out to dinner at this place called Ichiban in South Delhi. This place serves Asian food and I'm using a picture from that dinner as my reference. Now if you look at the picture on your screen, you'll see uh, the sliced cucumbers, you'll see the pickled kimchi, you'll also see the lovely blue pottery uh, casserole um, and which contains the noodles and uh, now I'm not going to draw the entire picture as it is I may decide to drop some elements for example I don't want to include the, the napkin I may also include some elements if I feel that is how uh, that that is what will look good on my paper on my page layout so uh, let's see how we, how it goes these are the materials I'll be using now I'll leave a list of the materials in the description box below but if you have any questions do get back. Let's get started. Now sometimes I like to do the initial sketch in pencil because this helps me figure out the placement of the objects. Once I'm happy with how it looks, I go in with the pen. I'm using a Figma Micron pen here but really you can use any fine liner you like. Just make sure it's waterproof. Using broken lines uh, to do your drawing, dots and dashes in some instances just adds to the charm. Uh, you, can, um, you can show textural elements by you know dots and dashes with the, maybe the rim of the plate or the uh, inside the curvature of the spoon or something like that. Uh, when you're drawing, look at the mass, the, look at the shapes of the objects, especially complex objects. For instance, here I'm going to draw the kimchi. So I'm trying to look, figure out how the whole mask looks like. I draw one piece and then I just do the other pieces adjoining them. Uh, it doesn't matter if they look slightly different. Uh, what is essential is that you're capturing the essence of the picture. After I had drawn the uh, the objects, there was a little space on the left side of the page and I went ahead and drew the condiments bowl and the salt and pepper shakers. I felt they looked uh, really cute over there and they made a good addition. They are not there in the photograph but I remember them from my visit to the restaurant. Uh, and this, this is perfectly fine, including such details only adds to the piece I feel. When I am painting food, I am almost always sketching from a photograph. Uh, I think it's because I just don't have the patience to paint my food first and then eat it. I want to eat my food hot. Is it the same with you? Well, anyway, we all have our preferences. So then I draw a border to a uh, frame of my sketch and uh, I move on to the casserole. Uh, I am so in love with this casserole. I think that was one of the reasons why I like this picture a lot. So there's a lot of, uh, a, lot of a lot of design on the casserole and I will try to capture the essence of it but not draw it all in detail. Uh, this gives it a more loose, a uh, better feeling than if I were to draw everything in micro, minute detail. Next, I move on to coloring. I'm using round brushes 6 and 2 and uh, a small mop brush. Uh, my watercolors are from Sakura Koi, the set of uh, 24 colors. So I have a little bit of color on my uh, palette already and I really don't like wasting colors. So I begin with using those colors up. I go on to do the cucumbers first. Um, if you feel it is too bright, the colors are too bright, you can tone it down with uh, mixing an earth color. or in green, uh, the cucumbers are green, so I mix it with a little bit of uh, red or reddish brown uh, from what is there in the palette. This will tone it down since it's a complementary color. I highly recommend keeping the uh, color swatches of your particular watercolor set for ready reference. Uh, I'm using a very diluted wash of raw sienna for the plates and a mix of ultramarine blue and crimson for the spoons. pale washes down first so that I can come back and build on them once they dry a little. 
and I'm just going over the page completing each piece as I come to it. For the placemat, I mix a little bit of Quinn Rose, uh, a very diluted mix in the existing mixture of uh, pale C of raw sienna to give a get a very toned down color. bluish violet mix of uh, ultramarine blue and uh, crimson uh, more of ultramarine blue to depict the glass Using burnt sienna here for the wooden tray. Now this is a curved object, so wherever I will see uh, the curved shape and some shadows, I will drop in some uh, dark umber, some burnt umber. Uh, this helps to give a three-dimensional look to the object. Don't be afraid of going in uh, a little dark sometimes you will realize that watercolor dries a lot lighter. Now when I was putting together this video I realized that the initial painting of the blue casserole unfortunately did not get captured because of technical reasons but I will explain here how I did it. It's a curved object just like the uh, wooden tray and hence the same principles of light of depicting light and shadow can be applied here as well. For the casserole go in with a pale wash of cobalt blue uh, leaving some spaces specks of white for the design uh, for the white uh, design in the in the reference picture. Now the right side of the casserole which is the shadow side will be a little darker so drop in a little bit of ultramarine blue in into the cobalt blue mix. I had painted the kimchi in a very pale yellow wash earlier. Use a mix of cad yellow and orange for the uh, darker colored portions or uh, drop in some bread to depict the chili in this uh, marinade. With a very watered down version of this use a uh, uh, light strokes to depict the texture on the cabbage. And add ultramarine glue into the same mix to depict the shadows. When painting your shadows, you can always decide to either make them more um, exaggerated and artistic or you can be make them very subtle. So if you want to make them subtle, you can just go in with a very watered down version of paints grey. But I like to sometimes add a little bit of artistic if I am in the mood. I like to make them a little artistic and um, a little exaggerated. So I will uh, then mix in a little bit of uh, a violetish mix, uh, ultramarine blue and crimson. If it's too bright, you can tone it down with burnt sienna or dark um, burnt umber. Do keep in mind that uh, cast shadows are darkest near the object which creates them. 
If you are enjoying the video so far, don't forget to like and subscribe. painting the handle of the casserole uh, and making it a little dark. Now since this is a glossy ceramic object with the light shining on it, there will be several highlights so we need to take that into account. For example, the portion of the handle which juts out will, uh, it will catch the high, will have a highlight so leave that, uh, leave that part uh, you know, unpainted. And uh, if by chance you have accidentally painted that, you can always go in with a thirsty brush and lift some of the color off. I will also use the same color mix to deepen the side of the casserole, which is the shadow side, and as well as the portions under the edges, uh, because they will have a little bit of a shadow there as well. Similarly, on the lid of the casserole, uh, be sure to paint around the white uh, designs. Don't be very specific in detailing out the design. Something loose makes the whole uh, picture look much more appealing. Now I'm just adding an extra layer of the shadow mix in certain portions where I feel it's required to make the uh, to make it pop a little. Some subtle strokes maybe here and there uh, to indicate the uh, the lettering on the condiment bowl or on the uh, placemat you don't uh, need to be very elaborate on it just just slight hint of it will do the trick I felt the kimchi would do with a uh, little more color so I'm using the same yellowish orange mix with red uh, to give light strokes here and there to deepen the color. Now this is a wet on dry technique it is called glazing. Glazing is a very handy technique in watercolor it helps to build up the intensity of your uh, of your painting layer by layer and it's really useful in uh, bringing out the contrast and making the painting pop. Now I'm doing the same thing with the cucumbers, uh, build, uh, adding and dropping in little more saturated color to bring out the form. You can skip all this if your painting already has the requisite amount of uh, sa color saturation. Looking around I find that I've missed out on a few things like the shadow over here and maybe I want to deepen up certain areas more so I will just go ahead and do that. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial so far. Don't forget to subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments below. The final step is to jot down the date and a few details about what you have painted.